So the disclaimer first, we didn't get any money from any company for this video. It's just our personal experience and we are not going to responsibilize ourselves for errors or things that you experience different. We just want to exchange with you our personal experience on working with skin sprays. So enjoy. So this is a typical part you would search skin spray for and um, this is why we have for example in the mechanical engineering quite often people who want to scan billet parts they are milled in a CNC mill and of course the good quality is shown by the shiny surface but this is as well creating the problems in the 3D scanning the same is on turning mills if you have special parts uh, especially problematic are parts with anodized um, surfaces and aluminum they can absorb sometimes the laser um, wavelength and make laser scans nearly impossible we had this when we had a, a bicycle uh, parts producer who was trying to scan with an ion scan HX uh, billet parts that they produced and it was nearly impossible other things is black parts like already mentioned uh, black rubber is here uh, something that is not so shiny and the worst case maybe of all of them is black glossy and this is black glossy helmet that we have here um, to test as well it's uh, another problematic surface that you need spray for it's translucent surfaces that normally are because of their transparency not capable to be scanned directly so to show the basic problems that can occur in the 3d scanning of problematic or how Fraunhofer says uncooperative surfaces we choose a 9 scan HX and this is a scanner that has that advantage that you have both technologies white light scanning and laser scanning united in one scanner and that's why it's quite idle to show the typical problems that you would have scanning without scanning spray and why it's needed you will understand very fast if you didn't make that experience already so we are going to start with a white light scanning and this is named rapid scan in the case of the ion scan HX and to scan with markers we are going to use a turntable that's pre-prepared where we have the markers already stick on and put one of the billet parts that's uh, a supermoto brake caliper distance adapter on it and let's see what's going to happen if we want to scan it so as you can already see in the preview the green surfaces are the ones that the scanner by default is capable to scan and after this short scan we can just stop to see what it looks like and you can see the scan was possible but already in the preview that's a little bit worse than the final view we can see that not all the surfaces had been captured very well and we were just for a test see how the calculated mesh based on what we scanned right now will look like and you will see that the result will not be very fine because of the reflections on the surface and this is not even a very complicated um, surface to scan actually you see that here the quality of uh, the surface is rather rough you have a lot of um, surface artifacts and even small details that uh, normally with this resolution would be already visible are not really fine that, I guess that helmet that is actually combining both problems and I'm just scanning a part of the surface and here you see capturing of the glossy black surface no way you will not be able to scan it 
there is absolutely no image possible. If I put my finger here, you can see that was scanned absolutely with no problem and it's just simply not possible without scanning spray. So to check this right now, how it would look with the laser scanner, that is something people really like to buy in the current times because um, it's less sensitive against these problems. We are going to do these fast scans as well on the laser scanner base and take a look how they look like. Just select laser scanning. Override the test project. Take a comparable resolution. And as you can see the result, it's much better I guess. It's not perfect, but it's usable. So we are going to jump directly to the most complicated object, that's the glossy black helmet. And let's take a look how the laser scanner is performing in this case. So we are going to start the preview and you can see capturing on that plastic black surface from the turntable is much faster than on the glossy black. Nevertheless it is possible. We are capturing in reflective mode. We can change to normal mode, see if that is making it better. And you can see here as well, there is black plastic here below, that's absolutely fine. On the lower border of the helmet, this is this area here. And they are captured perfectly, but the glossy black is possible. But it's not like recommendable to scan it without any kind of the additional treatment with scanning sprays. So let's calculate the mesh on the result that we see and you can see here laser scanning is possible but the surface quality is not the same like in the original parts as well it's not possible to scan that uh, windshield that's transparent so as well for laser scanning I rather recommend scan parts like this with some kind of the scanning spray or surface treatment at least In this sequence you can see what it makes a difference to have a half sprayed helmet with ASAP Orange. So it makes totally sense to think about surface treatment independent of the scanner that you are using. <coughs> Scanning spray is a chemical product, so we really recommend you to take some measures to protect your health. If you are spraying indoors in some area where you are not working all the time, at least uh, you should use some active coal mask. We here use a one from 3M, but of course there is different ones from different manufacturers. Um, they are normally available in paint shops for car painting and they are not very expensive. If you have a, a workshop or a tool shop, think about buying some kind of the um, aspiration box for airbrushing where there is a ventilation that's transporting out the air from spraying around with your scan spray. In general if you are not working in front one of these special aspiration boxes for airbrush spray outside and uh, in good ventilated rooms. Spray distance 20 centimeters, evaporation time 12 to 24 hours, cyclododecan based, evaporation hour 2 hours. Didn't you have already the impression that choosing the right skin spray is something like finding orientation in a jungle? So to help you find some orientation in this jungle, we bought 
all the modern sprays that are let's say commonly used on the market to give you an orientation what they are good for. As in the beginning of our 3D scan career we used a lot of developer sprays like this Finder spray here that we bought from Finder in this time that was actually um, created and developed for crack detection in metal parts times moved on and a lot of new systems appeared. I think one of the very very well-known products on the market right now is uh, the Ezra Blue. I think that should be the spray with the highest volume in the market in this moment and um, as well there is a, a lot of new Ezra products one of the latest is the Ezra Black that is a transparent color scanning spray very interesting new products as well there is that uh, scanning spray that you can use in uh, different application units like airbrush or you can spray it in big painting guns but there is as well um, popping up new solutions from new um, companies actually Adblime is one of them that was founded very near our company it's just a few kilometers away that is going into a different recipe using Zyklododecan. We as well ordered a bunch of uh, tarnish sprays that is from M Alchemy. that's actually a, a quite old player on the market that has disappeared for some time in uh, let's say the, of the, the popular perception in my opinion but as well they had good products um, in the past and we didn't use them for a long time so it was a good opportunity for us to see what had happened there and I see that they have new products and as well new product ideas like this quite interesting 3D scan paint pen, let's name it like this, this is a pen what you can use for application on very small and tiny objects for example if you want to 3D scan cutting tools, metal cutting tools wood cutting tools this could be an interesting option to paint your um, your tools and uh, small sections that are difficult to spray because they are very sharp for example as well we will talk about how good um, the sprays are for different scanners like uh, traditional white light scanners or professional laser scanners as well the traditional structured light scanners um, that need a lot of uh, surface treatment will be represented in this discussion and uh, I hope you will enjoy it and find something find something useful for your 3D scanning workflow but before we're going to check the sprays we're going to start with a little bit of basic theory to understand better the problem okay so the first case is a, a quite common case this is the normal scan case when your surface is not very special and you can simply scan it without any treatment so we have um, a 3D scanner sketched here that is basically simplified through two objects that's the camera and the light emitter we are just talking about optical 3D scanning, so CT scanning is not the topic in this moment okay, in normal conditions you have an object here that's the surface of your object in blue and um, you have the emitted beam to the object and you have a part of it reflected to the camera back what is then recorded and is used to yes calculate your 3D image in this coin in this place it's not a 3D image it's just points based on your surface so so if you move the scanner up and down your surface the black line should represent the points in the area concentrated where the surface is located in real life that's what your 3D scanner is doing in this moment 
So if you take a closer look on the surface, then you will have the situation that there will be coming on that surface one beam with some light information L1 and it will be reflected the light information L2. This is basically alterated by the surface where the beam is reflected. Part of the beam is reflected to the camera direction, part of it is deflected in other areas that are not usable for your 3D scan and that's actually why they are not important for us. But what is important to keep in mind that the surface is alterating the light signal before it's reflected back to the camera. The second case where you need um, 3D scanning spray for can be similar like before. We have a, a camera and we have um, a light source this might be your hand scanner again but this time the surface is black really black that means mud black nothing is going to return from the surface that um, whole light information that has uh, let's say a mixture of different light length in the case of a white light scanner laser is just one of them this is let's say coherent light but in the case of a normal scanner that happens is that there is emitted a light signal to the surface L1 and afterwards nothing is coming back because that black surface is just not emitting any kind of the, the light information and if there is nothing coming back to your camera so there will be no information that can be captured. That's where you use um, a scanning spray to coat the surface and after coating the surface you will again have a light information coming on the coated surface and the light information will be altered that means L1 dash L2 dash and um, we will have a possible depth capturing point capturing on this surface okay so what is happening in the case um, that we have let's say a mirroring surface the condition will be totally different in the case that we have a surface that's like a mirror you will have a special situation. So let's sketch that third case and in this case we have as well again we have a camera and we have a light source both of them are integrated in the handle the 3D scanner and it doesn't make a difference if it's structured light or any kind of the different lights uh, that you have in this case and L1 will be in the information more or less L1 that will be mirrored back to the camera so you will see no alteration in, in this light signal so you will have like no information where the depth of this surface will be because it will be the same reflection depending the let's say distance to the sensor always so an absolute perfect mirror will not create any picture in this case so in this case as well we are as well coating the surface with the uh, scan spray and again like before we will have um, a L1 dash and a L2 dash and we will be fine
so to test um, the transparency of uh, the different scan sprays um, I built up this uh, simple test bench that is currently um, built of a mobile phone with a special app that is uh, analyzing the sensors of a cell phone and uh, this LED um, light that is possible to be regulated up and down and here you can see that it is lighting through the uh, glass, it's a window glass where the different foils are clamped uh, in front that were sprayed before and shining through that sprayed area into the camera that's measuring here in this bar the current uh, looks that is the amount of light that's entering the camera and here you can then check if you have a reduction of the passing light through by the foil by the sprayed foil and like this in a very easy way I can determine the reduction of uh, light that is passing through the glass and we can see here for example how this looks in Aesop Orange we will have here a 202 lux reduction regarding the light density passing through the sprayed uh, foil Meanwhile, I continue to show um, different measurements on different sprayed foils with different scanning sprays. I just don't want to comment every value that was created. I just want uh, to tell you before showing the table of the results how that um, sprayed foils were generated. Actually, the foils were bought um, in a paper shop and they are normally used for binding um, books and uh, different stuff as a protection and they proved to be quite useful for this kind of the purpose. I sprayed them three times in the area where they were measured. The, I tried to um, spray them in the same uh, speed passing three times over that same surface and like this you have an overlapping of different influences. One is the spray system including the valve and the material as well. It will show you a little how um, the coverage of the object uh, will be in that spraying in your daily use. Here you can see the overview of the results but not necessarily the spray with the highest reduction of transparency is the best overall. Coatings uh, have, uh, let's say, um, complex questions and what is the name is that the coating isn't too thick and easy to apply and for example the Tarnish 13 with the highest value is not necessarily the easiest to apply spray for your project. The next test is a one pump spray test where I was just sprayed with one a strong push on that glass with the foil in front of it and it is to test the shape that will be result uh, out of uh, the spray heads that are mounted and it's possible um, to see how much spray is spread in which areas. Here you can see the comparison between the Azure Blue and the Azure Orange. The Azure Blue is having a very concentrated center of the sprayed area whereas that as a orange is having some spread area what I really like you can see that both still have uh, some liquid phase in the surface contact uh, when you have a 25 centimeter spray distance spraying with the MR products the Tarnish 50 had the nicest spray spread from all of them and not really having a very high density uh, spray concentration in the middle but as well not a too wide area of spread whereas uh, spraying the tarnish um, 12 was uh, really um, revealing some problems that went uh, later on it had a really good output uh, but it seemed from the side like the material itself just uh, as a smaller percentage was having a let's say adhesion on the foil itself would cause a, a concentrated not wet spray point but um, it seemed like uh, that spray is like powdering over the surface partly and not being stick to the surface 
what was not uh, really problematic and had a very good spray um, surface as well was the Tarnish 11. It was similar to the Tarnish 50 but with a bit more concentration in the middle but uh, it seemed to be as well easy to spray. The application of the Tarnish 13 have to be done more carefully. Just avoid, uh, let's say, liquid areas. They will have slimy character and as you can see, after some minutes they will build some ice crystal pattern that's really nice but it takes quite a long time to disappear. Both Adblime products have uh, two different spray heads that come with the product. And it seems like the second spray head is uh, creating some more or less oval spray, um, let's say shape. And you can see it, we sprayed both of the um, valves on the foil. And uh, what was obvious that in the Adblime 6 seems to be more cyclododecan compared to the AB2 because of the longer lasting on the surface. What gave it a nice uh, sprayed area at the distance, you have uh, not so high focus in the middle and a nice spread area around. Whereas the AB2 had a very concentrated, um, let's say, spray shape and uh, had a rest of a liquid face in its surface contact, what um, makes it uh, a spray that you should spray with more distance to avoid that you have uh, any kind of the um, let's say solvents or uh, any stuff like um, the spray gas that is mostly um, in that case uh, butan propane is coming as liquid to your surface and cause some harm to paintings or plastic. In general your spraying distance should be big enough to have dry contact between your surface of the object and your scanning spray. You can test it out using a window surface and uh, changing the distance to a point where you don't see any liquid phase anymore on your surface contact. And don't go too far away to not spray half of your spray content over the object and don't have any benefit from it. So one part of the efficiency of a scanning spray is of course um, the amount of uh, volume that you buy. Um, regarding the money that you pay for each of the scans and you see that they are different. Uh, if you take a look at the MR scan sprays they come with uh, 500 ml and they are a bit more expensive because of that and um, Adblime and Aesop is using the standard international more common 400 ml sprays but um, let's see what's inside and I think one good indicator is uh, as well the weight of each of the sprays of course the different chemical recipes have different uh, relative weights but uh, or density you could call it in this case but for getting an idea um, how much is in there how much we can take out spraying uh, it to the end I think it's a good start point at least we already started to weight um, this sprays because um, we wanted to be sure that um, we don't catch up uh, some of the sprays that are outside the range but we can do that on this quite common kitchen um, balance and uh, start with the Reflecon Tarnish 50 from MR So let's see how much we will have as weight in the end when the sprays are empty and this gives us as well some idea about um, how efficient we can use the spray and how much will be the cost in the daily use. The next test could be called the parking graffiti test um, that I use to estimately get an idea how much area I could spray with each uh, spray itself and therefore I was spraying at some parking surfaces in uh, some meander um, let's say movements and I tried to keep in the same speed over um, the asphalt. Problematic was that uh, not all of the sprays worked in this test. The Adblime sprays, for example, seem to cool down because of the pressure loss in the valve and 
started to decrease quite fast uh, the amount of material that's coming out. It seems like this is not made to spray big areas continuously. The Adblime products weren't the only ones to show this behavior, but they had the strongest tendency. As well, in the Tarnish 11 and in the Aesop Orange, there was a bit of this tendency that you can see in the weight that I measured after the spray test of the sprays themselves. The reason seems to be the cooling down of the valves because of the expansion of the gas, that's a drop of enthalpy, makes the material more thick and not passing so easy through the spray valve anymore. So the AdBlime results have to be regarded um, limitedly because they are fine if you spray them in impulses. Normal spraying on smaller objects is absolutely no problem. But if you would consider to spray big objects with them, it could be some topic. That um, as a blue was quite fine, but it shows as well on the park spray test that focus of the skin spraying um, had itself like it did before. The Aesop Orange was showing a good performance in this test beside not being able to spray all the, the content at once but it was just a very small rest. I really like to work with this spray in the practical work because um, that dosing of the spray on the surface is very homogeneous and uh, not on the parking place very visible is very thin and good to scan. The Tarnish 50 was um, similar to the Aesop Orange, but it had a bit better spread of uh, the beam that was dosed and it was like a bit better covering the black surface. Of course it's possible that this was achieved by a thicker surface layer, but at this point we couldn't measure that. The area that was sprayable with this Tarnish 11 was quite big considering that there was 60 gram of material left in the spray after this test. As well, the focus of the spray head itself was a bit more concentrated. The sprayable area of the Tarnish 12 is really huge, but considering the low adhesion on vertical surfaces or small objects, it's not sure if this is transferable to normal scanning preparations. In the following list you can see the weights that were kept after the permanent spraying test and how much weight was uh, in the sprays after spraying them till the end. So you have to imaginarily add to uh, for example add lime sprays quite a bunch of uh, let's say left volume or let's say spray quantity and the same for the Aesop Orange and as well the Tarnish 11, there was as well some rest to spray that wasn't sprayable at once. In this test you can see in time lapse uh, the different vaporization times on the test sheets and you can see as well that the differences are quite huge. If you use an Aesop Blue or an Tarnish 12, you don't have a really long time to scan. That's absolutely fine if you have smaller parts or if your environmental temperature is rather low. I prefer to have a little bit more time, for example with a Tarnish 50 or a Aesop Orange. As well an Adblime 6 gives you more scanning time. So you have to, let's say, not hurry so much. The Tarnish 13 takes a long time but it is as well more difficult to use. Of course it can be beneficial if you have a very large object uh, to scan over some days, not to spray it and respray it again, but uh, take care that you practice a little bit uh, the application of Tarnish 13 if you really want to use it. But as well keep in mind that the vaporization time till the spray is disappearing is as well depending on uh, factors like surface tension that means if you have a oily or let's say a dry surface and the surface structure itself so it will not necessarily on every material reflect um, 
the time it takes for disappearing from the object. Normally it doesn't come to any problems spraying metal parts with uh, any of the 3D scanning sprays. It's a bit different if you consider spraying plastic or painted parts. In the following you will find a list of the main basic classes of plastics and um, how they should react uh, regarding the ingredients of the different scan sprays. These lists are not complete and they have to be taken carefully because they are just an orientation and in some cases the ingredients are mixtures so it is not clear if they will react the same way how it is estimated. As well it has to be considered that this plastic uh, basic variants have a lot of modifications for different purposes. It can be let's say more chemical resistance as well like uh, heat resistance and many more and there is a lot of blended plastics and composites. So this is just a rough orientation for you to consider what is possible or not. What I can confirm is the problems with PVC soft. This is something we had in, in many cases and you will see here that there is possibilities to avoid that problem if you spray with enough distance to get rid of the propane um, in the liquid phase. In this time-lapse test we are analyzing the shorter lasting sprays on realistic surfaces that can really occur like this in the daily work. And you can see here in the Tarnish 11 for example that till one hour all the surfaces and edges are covered fine and after one hour and 15 minutes or something like this you start to have the first islands where that scan spray is disappearing. The next sample part is the Ezra Blue and here you can see that you start to have eye landing after 30 minutes already. The same with the Tarnish 12, here you have a little bit more than 30 minutes to scan your parts till you will get the first areas where the scan spray disappears. The Adblime AV2 didn't show uh, a very long lasting time on the foil test, but here in the real parts test you can see that you have over one hour to scan your parts, what is quite okay for smaller projects. So coming to the end of this video, just about uh, the conclusion, it's not a big surprise what the ESA products can do for us. We just use them for quite a long time in the daily use as well. And the ESA Blue is a good budget spray 
what is disappearing quite fast and complete without any big problems. It's for many cases it's sufficient, but um, we rather use uh, Aesop Orange. This is actually the spray that I prefer to use for most of the cases because of the longer lasting on the surface and as well the homogeneous thin spray coat that it can do on uh, let's say skin surfaces that is as well have a bit better spread regarding the valve it's mounted on. So as well we should consider that as a orange uh, uh, more for the use in uh, metrology cases uh, where it's uh, the need to have a very thin coating and uh, the price isn't such a problem. What I got to say what surprised me this time was the uh, Adblime products. I tested them in the very beginning when they hadn't been I think on the market even or at the very beginning of their sales. In this time that Adblime for the short term use was disappearing much too fast on uh, let's say rubber surfaces and uh, let's say composite surfaces with n uh, low uh, surface tension. Whereas the long lasting version, I'm not sure if it was uh, AB6, the name in that time, I got to look if I have some rests of it, it wasn't disappearing at all. It was, let's say, just after a few days, I just got an air gun and sprayed it off. And I got to say, the Adblime products improved. They have really worked on their products. And um, beside the fact that you have uh, the tendency of slowing down the, the spray um, and um, not being able to spray it at once, they are really good products. You have uh, a second uh, spray head with it, so you can vary depending your shape of your object. What I what I liked, I just as well would prefer the Adblime 6 to use if I would buy one. It's uh, the, the dry um, spread of the material on the surface that looked better to me, independent from the lasting time that I as well uh, like better. I have uh, not pressure to work on the objects and in 90% of the cases um, there is no problem if it takes one day to disappear for that scan spray till the customer gets it back or there will be the next step in the usage. As well a very positive um, surprise for me were the MR products. I remember them that they had been fine but we didn't use them so much um, I guess and there hadn't been let's say really competitors in that first time when, when we used them. It was, I think, times before Aesop um, founded their own brand and um, it is, let's say, really something that's a long time ago. The Tarnish 11 is a, a good budget spray that is very easy to use, disappearing fast, is having a good quantity of surface it can cover and it's um, not difficult to, in, the, in the daily use. The Tarnish 12 is um, a bit unique. It is having a tendency to overspray, but it is because of uh, its uh, solvent profile really um, unique and uh, useful for some surfaces that are, uh, let's say, not capable to be treated with uh, Tarnish 11, for example. What I think is makes it as a, a unique uh, product. On the other hand, it is disappearing a bit too fast, in my opinion. The Tarnish 13 is a very specific spray. I, I think um, people should think twice if they buy it. Um, it's a spray for a special case. You have to train a little bit the application, but if you uh, train it, it's working fine. And it has the big advantage of a very long lasting surface with a very good uh, density. So the covering of the surface itself is uh, really good and you have, um, without spraying a lot, you have a good coverage of your original surface uh, properties. The really big surprise to me had been Tarnish 50. It's uh, the only Cyclododecan spray um, in the test beside the two Adblime sprays. And it was a very good compromise between very good to spray regarding its uh, spray head. Um, the lasting on the surface was very good and enough for most of the cases and uh, as well regarding its chemical properties it's not really problematic on let's say different plastic surfaces beside the fact that it's really easy to apply and doesn't make any big problems in the daily application so this was for me the big surprise from the MR side Nevertheless, all the products are really good. It's not like um, in the past you had to think a lot about your scan sprays, uh, that you will buy something that will not work at all. 
as well there had been a lot of things going on like eliminating different chemicals for uh, let's say better health let's say compatibility or have it not so problematic regarding long time use so i hope you get some information for your personal decision that uh, you found in this video and uh, we will keep you informed about new uh, surface treatment methods and other stuff in the next videos so hear you bye